Hi, welcome to Revision of Meander Formation with Mr. Mercer. This is a very typical higher question, and it's quite a tricky one, so make sure that you revise it thoroughly. As with most diagram questions that you've practiced with me, I try to break it down into three easy steps, so it's easier to remember, easier to revise, and easier to produce under pressure. As with all diagrams, you should use a limited use of colour to speed you up, and you should stick to one of the two approaches that I teach, either labelling the diagram itself or drawing the diagram and writing a paragraph of explanation underneath, but make sure that your paragraph of explanation draws reference to points that you identify on the diagram with letters or numbers. Okay, so let's get started. As usual, there's a keyword list down the right-hand side for your, for your own use when you practice this question later. To start off, you of course need to point out at label one here the pools and the riffles. Now it's not enough just to simply label them, though you will gain some credit for that. Uh, you need to explain why they're important. The water flows slower at the pools and faster at the riffles. Extended credit can be earned for pointing out that the water flows quicker at the riffles because the water is shallower. Um, and slower at the pools because of its depth. Moving on to diagram two, you should point out that abrasion and hydraulic action are taking place. Um, I would direct your, the examiner's attention towards the outside bend of your meander. Try to make sure that the outside bend of your meander matches the position of your riffle in diagram one. So these labels three and four will point out the processes of abrasion and hydraulic action. And as in previous videos, I'd, I'd like to point out that you can gain extra credit if you go into a detailed explanation of what these terms actually mean. So abrasion is not only taking place on the outside bend, but is the process by which the force of the water wears away rock um, through friction. Um, in this diagram, you also want to point out that deposition is taking place at label 5 here. And deposition is taking place because the water is moving slower around the inside bend. Erosion in the form of abrasion and hydraulic action are taking place on the outside bend because the water is faster there. Diagram 3 is in cross-section. And... Um, in diagram 3, you should point out the uh, convex bank, or the slip-off slope, or the river beach, whichever term you're most comfortable with, and the concave bank. Those are, those are labels 6 and 7. In this part of the diagram, of this part of the answer, you should point out that helicoidal flow is taking place. A helicoidal flow is best shown by a simple arrow like that, and you then want to have an arrow pointing to it so you can give your explanation at point eight. Helicoidal flow is the rifle-like motion of the water as it passes around the bend, the spiraling, spinning nature of the water. Erodes material from the concave bank, the concave area of the bend, the outside of the bend, and there and then transports it and deposits it on the inside of the bend, contributing towards the formation of the slip-off slope or the river beach. So multiple marks can be scored if we're a proper explanation of helicoidal flow. Key to getting this question correct is not just being able to label the riffles, the pools rather, the riffles, the outside bend, the inside bend, and the helicoidal flow. That's not enough. You need to be able to provide in-depth explanations linking the outside bend to increased water velocity and therefore to the erosional processes that will take place at points three and four. You need to link the inside bend to decreased water velocities and therefore the deposition that will take place there forming a river beach. You should go into detail about helicoidal flow, its erosive capacity, but also its ability to transport and deposit material onto the inside bank. If you remember all of this detail, then you'll do well in this question. 
Now that you've heard the video lesson, try drawing these diagrams from memory and using eight labels, try to explain the formation of a meander bend. Um, you can use the words on the right hand side of the screen to help you if you need to do so. But remember, detail counts. Okay, I hope that helps.